Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 27th of September. Beijing protests after unclaimed peak in India's Arunachal named after the Lailamu. Pakistan inquiry finds blasphemy accused doctor was killed in fake police shootout. And Bangladesh chief advisor Yunus pushes for extradition of Sheikh Hasina. Well And now for all the details. A day after India named an unclaimed peak in Arunachal Pradesh, after the 6th Dalai Lama, Sangyang Gyatso, Beijing has expressed objection over the naming. The reaction came after an expedition team from India's National Institute of Mountaineering and Adventure Sports in a historic first ascent climbed an unnamed peak in Montavang region of India's northeastern state and named it after the 6th Dalai Lama who belonged to the region. Answering a query during the regular press briefing on Thursday, China's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jiang expressed protests over the naming of the mountain peak and reiterated that the region which Beijing calls Zhangnan is Chinese territory. It's illegal and null and void for India to set up the so-called Arunachal Pradesh in Chinese territory. This has been China's consistent position, he added. China claims Arunachal Pradesh is part of Southern Tibet. However, New Delhi has repeatedly rejected this claim. India has maintained that the remote northeastern state is an integral and inalienable part of the country. New Delhi argues that repeatedly stating baseless arguments will not lend validity to Beijing's claims. And India, along with Brazil and South Africa on Thursday, condemned terrorism in all its forms and manifestation and called for concerted actions against all UN-listed terror entities, including the Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Daesh, and the Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba jaish e Mohammed, and other proxy groups and their facilitators. In a meeting of foreign ministers of three countries on the sidelines of the UNGA summit, the minister said terrorism is a global scourge that must be fought and that terrorist safe havens should be eliminated in every part of the world. In a veiled reference to Pakistan and its all-weather ally China, which is among permanent five, the grouping said they look forward to avoidance of double standards in UNSC, including listing proposals objectively on evidence-based criteria. And in a shocking revelation, the Home Minister of Pakistan's Sindh has confirmed that the police orchestrated the killing of a doctor who was in custody over accusations of blasphemy. A report. An inquiry has found that Shah Nawaz, the doctor accused of blasphemy, was killed in a fake police shootout last week in Pakistan after violent protests by Islamists. Sindh province Home Minister Zia Langer said on Thursday, ordering criminal proceedings against the officers involved. Shah Nawaz, a doctor working in the town of Umarkot, went into hiding after local clerics accused him of blasphemy over a Facebook post, which he said in a video statement was posted on one of his old accounts that had been hacked long ago, according to his family. The clerics then led violent protests in the area, attacking police stations and burning police vehicles. His family said Nawaz had surrendered to police after receiving assurances from investigators that he would have a chance to prove his innocence. Instead, they said he was killed in a shootout. It is the second such killing in police custody in a week. The accused officers include a Deputy Inspector General of Police, two other senior officers and their subordinates, the minister said. Local clerics and some politicians treated the accused officers garlanding and showering them with rose petals at red carpet events, according to human rights groups and pictures and videos posted on social media. Blasphemy is punishable by death in predominantly Muslim Pakistan. No one has been executed by the state for the crime, but the issue is so sensitive 
that dozens of people accused of blasphemy have been lynched by mobs before a trial could begin. Moving on, an international conference in Geneva this week condemned Pakistan's brutal treatment of Baloch and Sindhi people, flagging concern over cases of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in the region. A report. A global conference convened in Geneva on Thursday issued a scathing condemnation of ongoing human rights crisis in Balochistan and Sindh, expressing deep concern over the widespread enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and cultural genocide being perpetrated by the Pakistani state. Hundreds of Baloch activists have been placed on Pakistan's fourth schedule, effectively criminalizing their descent. The activists in Geneva also denounced China's collaboration with Pakistan in exploiting the region's natural resources and the proposed takeover of Gwadar by Chinese authorities. And so last 70 years, we see, think uh, we come to the conclusion that uh, the, uh, what uh, the Pakistan uh, government want and the army wants, they want just to extract uh, our resources uh, like water, land, uh, minerals, uh, gas, uh, all those, but in the return we are not getting anything. So, so why we want to escalate these issues and we will try to make the network and uh, tell the world that uh, the real face of Pakistan is different. On and in the big, we are the people are suffering most. So it's top Pakistan military and financial aid, especially if you go to finish, stop their financial aid, Pakistan will sooner becoming a collapsed country. So we urge to, to raise to our voice and stop genocide to Baloch nation and send to facts and finding uh, mission to Balochistan and let the Baloch decide what they want in the, in the future. Members of Baloch, Sindhi and Pashtun communities blame they are made targets of military operations and ethnic stereotyping in Pakistan. The situation is not highlighted by the local media, forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. Bangladesh's chief advisor Muhammad Yunus on Thursday said, Former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina should be extradited to Bangladesh, adding she should face trial in her home country. In a first reaction over Hasina's extradition, Yunus, who is considered an arch rival of the former Premier, said if Hasina has committed crimes, she should be extradited and brought to justice in Bangladesh. His remark came weeks after Bangladesh Law Minister made a similar comment highlighting that the ministry will take the required action if needed. Sheikh Hasina, who was the Prime Minister for over a decade, had fled to India on 5th of August, minutes before a mob stormed her official residence in capital, Dhaka. Following this, multiple cases have been registered against her for the deaths in students' protests, which led to her ouster. There are calls by protesters and opposition parties for her extradition for facing trial in Bangladesh. Notably, Dhaka and New Delhi have an extradition treaty signed in 2013 during the second term of Hasina's premiership. Moving on, India's first luxury train, Palace on Wheels, departed for its season first journey from New Delhi this week. Launched in 1982, the train only runs from September to April from New Delhi to the western Rajasthan state. The train is a joint venture run by the Indian Railways and Rajasthan Tourism Development Corporation and aims to promote the state's exquisite heritage, art and culture. There are reportedly 14 coaches and 41 cabins inside the train that can accommodate up to 80 guests. The travellers enjoy luxury amenities along with royal decor of interiors named after various places in Rajasthan state, denoting its history and lineage. The train has an itinerary of seven nights and eight days that takes travellers through various locations in Rajasthan, including Jaipur, Udaipur, Bharatpur and others. Pricing per person ranges from 830 US dollars to as high as $3,800 depending on the facilities opted and the date of booking. Tourism के दृष्टि से हम international level पर देखें तो ये जो train है राजस्थान के लिए एक landmark है और लोग बहुत दूर से विभिन्न देशों से इस विशेष रूप से इस train पर यात्रा करने के लिए आते हैं। आप देख रहे हैं आज ये train आपको एक नए रूप में नजर आ रही है। हम जहाँ पर हैं रेस्टोरेंट जिसे शीश महल का रूप दिया गया है और जो राजस्थानी जो एक art and culture है और heritage है 
जो तो रॉयल टच है उसको देते हुए इसको डिग्री का काम इस पर करवाया गया है Very excited to see the trains, uh, decor, look and feel. And I hope we have a good, pleasant experience. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.